Hey there, how's it going? I'm now in Minsk, the capital of Belarus. Today is my second full day here, and today I'm going to make a video showing how expensive is uh, Minsk and Belarus. However, it's going to be a little different from uh, previous videos in which I would go out and explore the city and show, you know, street food and restaurants and maybe the metro and stuff like that. Speaking of which, the metro is right there. But in this video, then I'm actually going to uh, spend the whole uh, video talking here inside my apartment, except for dinner that I had last night, which I will show right now. A uh, Grimbergen double amber beer there. A glass of water. Not exactly sure what this is. Mashed potatoes, a beef dish and bread, all for 16 Belarusian rubles, which is like less than eight bucks. And so now I'm going to uh, do a tour of my apartment here. I booked it on booking.com, not a uh, sponsored video or anything. Private bathroom, the front door here. I am on like the sixth or seventh floor of this uh, apartment building. A separate bedroom. And then a living room here. And so this nice spacious apartment here with an epic view is just $110, but that is for three nights. And so that's about $37 per night. Now keep in mind that it is early December, and so that is the low season price. And so I can't say that uh, you'll get the same deal in the uh, summer in the high season. And then I'm also going to show some things that I bought at a local grocery store, just down the street, right down there. And so I went shopping my first night, and so that was the uh, night before yesterday, and so some of this has been um, eaten and drank already. But I have here some bananas. There were four bananas, a uh, bag of cookies, bread, cheese, kefir here, which is kind of like liquid yogurt, a uh, big bottle of water, and a bottle of juice, which is now finished. But here is the receipt, and the total was 13 Belarusian rubles, and so basically to uh, get the US dollar amount, then you divide by two, and then it's a little bit less than that. And so 13 Belarusian rubles is just $6 for all this food here. Super cheap. And so I'm now going to uh, tell the story of arriving here in Minsk, because that will uh, both explain a little bit about uh, Belarus travel in general, including uh, like visa info and stuff like that, as well as show the prices of things getting into the uh, city here. And so I came here from Tallinn, Estonia. I flew from there on Baltic uh, Airlines. It was about $200, which was not a great deal for a, a one-way flight, but I uh, booked it last minute. That included a 35 euro charge just for my uh, backpack for uh, extra luggage. And so the first thing that you want to know is that Belarus has opened up the uh, process for entering the country, depending on your passport, of course. But uh, it used to be that you had to have a visa in advance. But now you can enter the country and stay for 30 days without a visa as long as you fly into Minsk and fly out of Minsk. You can't uh, get that uh, possibility if you try to come overland from a uh, neighboring country. And so you have to fly into Minsk and then you get 30 days. However, as I uh, understood it when I read it, then if you stay for just five days, then it's a little bit easier. If you stay longer than five days and there's some like additional paperwork or something that you have to do, something like that. And so I decided to just stay five days, Monday through Friday. And so tomorrow is actually my last uh, full day here in Belarus. I'm just getting four nights or three full days in Minsk here. And so we arrive at the airport. I go up to the uh, passport control desk and I knew that uh, they were probably going to want a onward flight from here. And so I have a flight booked from here to Amsterdam. And then I also remember uh, reading about them requiring medical insurance, but I kind of sort of forgot about that, but I have a travel insurance, so I figured that would cover it. And so I go up to the desk and uh, she asked for the medical insurance. And I'm like trying to get it on my phone because I didn't have it already uh, loaded onto my uh, phone, the page from my insurance company. And she gets a little impatient and um, kind of gestures to me at a uh, desk that's nearby, where you can actually just buy uh, medical insurance there that will uh, fulfill that requirement. I wasn't sure if my travel insurance would necessarily fulfill it anyways. And so that's a great thing that they have that medical insurance available right there before you actually go through passport control. So I went over there and was curious to see how much it was going to cost. It was only four euros, which is about $5 for five days of medical insurance and then 
that was really easy and quick and you know that they are going to uh, accept that insurance. And so I go back with that paperwork and that does the trick and they let me in. And so I uh, am in the airport and I'm trying to uh, figure out Uber and for some reason Uber was not working. Now it's working and so I think I will be using it to get back to the airport but for some reason it was not working. I'm not sure if it was a slow connection or what but uh, I had to give up on Uber and instead went to an info desk and asked about a bus into the city. There was a bus leaving in like 20 or 30 minutes and so I get the info for uh, where to go uh, catch the bus and then I go to a exchange desk to get some local currency, the Belarusian uh, ruble. Now normally then I will uh, just go to an ATM and use my ATM card and uh, get uh, cash there and then you get the local currency at a fair rate but in this case then I had some euros left over that I wanted to exchange. Now oftentimes changing money in the airport is actually a really bad idea because it is a uh, worse rate than if you uh, go into uh, the center of the city but in this case then it was actually a good rate and so I exchanged 100 euros and that gave me like 233 or so Belarusian rubles. And so I head over to the uh, bus stop, catch the bus. It was five Belarusian rubles for the uh, bus. That's less than $2.50 for a pretty long bus ride into the city. And then I was uh, looking at Google Maps for where I was going to uh, check in for this place here. It was a different location from the actual apartment here. It's like an apartment renting company. And so there's a uh, check-in office for that and I had that address. That's something to look for with these kinds of uh, situations is make sure you don't show up at the building. If I come here, it would just be a locked door and nobody's here to help me. And so you have to make sure you have that right when it isn't actually a hotel that you're uh, checking into. And so I had it uh, on my map and luckily the bus went right by um, the place where I needed to uh, check in, like literally a one minute walk away from a bus stop. And so the bus lets me off. I go over there and I'm at the address and then there's a locked uh, door. I can see that that is the right door, but there's no indication in the uh, description of the instructions on booking.com of how to actually get their attention inside the building because it's not like their front uh, uh, door. It's like kind of an apartment building um, that's locked with a key code. And so I'm not quite sure what to do at that point. And then I see a uh, dial pad and it indicated uh, that it was suite number 26. And so just kind of as a what the heck, try something, I put 26 into the dial pad and sure enough, it worked, it called them. Uh, they opened the door, I went in there. And so I got all checked in there. They gave me the keys and instructions and uh, the address for the actual apartment here. And then they booked me a taxi, fortunately, which is a better choice than going out onto the street and uh, hailing down a taxi, especially in certain cities uh, some places it's kind of more reliable than others, but I'd heard that uh, the taxi drivers can try to uh, rip you off here. And so that is one of the reasons that I didn't take the taxi from the airport into the city here. Plus the fact it's a long distance and so it could be uh, more expensive than uh, Uber would have been. And certainly a lot more expensive than uh, the super cheap bus. And so I catch the uh, taxi over here. That cost uh, five rubles as well. So about $2.50 for, it was like a couple of kilometers. And then uh, fortunately the key works and um, I get into the apartment and everything is good. So uh, Belarus is definitely very nice and cheap and this is Minsk, the capital. And so things are going to be even uh, cheaper out in the countryside in these small towns. I watched a video of another guy that was in a uh, tiny town and ordered a massive meal uh, for two people and it came to like $8 or something, including vodka and like lots of different uh, courses and stuff like that. And so. Uh, Belarus in general is super, super cheap, especially considering this is Europe here. And so this is like as cheap as it gets for Europe. Pretty uh, similar to Georgia, probably the uh, country of Georgia that I was in uh, previously. And so you can definitely travel here very nice and cheap. And then the last thing I'll mention here is that uh, last night I went out with a uh, local here, one of my viewers, uh, who I was actually having dinner with in that uh, clip where I showed dinner from last night, but she didn't want to be in the video. We took the metro, she got me all set up with the uh, metro card, and so I got uh, 10 trips on a metro card and it costs like $2, so it's like 20 cents per metro trip to get around the city. And then I'm sure that uh, buses are similarly priced, and of course there is also Uber, which does in fact uh, work here, and so you can get around the city very cheaply. Uh, you can find a very nice apartment for a very reasonable price. Hostels would be even uh, much cheaper, I'm sure. I didn't even check out hostels. But what it comes down to is that Belarus is definitely a very, very cheap place to travel to. 
So I'm going to uh, make one more video tomorrow, walking around the city, giving more of a taste for the uh, city. And then as I mentioned, after this, heading to Amsterdam. All right, take it easy.